Hey guys, Justin here, and welcome back to our 13th example video following our course on differential equations. Now, today's example video is going to be on reduction of order problems. So let's go ahead and get into our first problem. All right, so for number one, we want to find the general solution for the following equation. We have x squared times y double prime plus x times y prime minus y equals x squared plus one. And we are given the solution y1 is equal to x, where y1 is the solution to the complementary equation, where this is equal to zero. So our standard substitution for these types of problems is going to be y is equal to z times y1. So in this case, we'll have y is equal to x times z. And in order to properly make this substitution, we are going to have to take derivatives of this. So let's go ahead and find the first derivative. So that's going to be z prime x plus z. And then the second derivative will be equal to z double prime x plus 2z prime. So now that we have solved for our y prime and our y double prime, we can go ahead and substitute these into our original differential equation. So we will have x squared times our y double prime, which is z double prime x plus 2z prime. Then we'll have plus x times our y prime, which is z prime x plus z. And lastly, we'll have a minus y, which is just minus xz. Now, if we have done this correctly, this term from the y should cancel out with one of our other terms, which we can see it will because we have a plus xz from this middle term here. So let's go ahead and distribute this x squared and x through and combine some like terms. So we will have x cubed z double prime, and that's going to be plus, while this first term will contribute 2x squared z prime, and the second term will contribute 1x squared z prime. So we'll have plus 3x squared z prime. And like I said before, those xz's will cancel. And we will have that that is equal to x squared plus 1. So here's where the reduction of order comes in. Because we don't have a z term in this left-hand side of the equation, we can let w equal z prime, which allows us to write this as a first order equation. So when we let w equal z prime, we will get x cubed times w prime plus 3x squared times w is equal to x squared plus 1. And there we have successfully reduced the order from a second order equation to a first order equation. So now we can divide through by x cubed, and we will get w prime plus 3 over xw is equal to 1 over x plus 1 over x cubed. Now from here, we are going to want to solve the corresponding homogeneous equation, which will be w prime plus 3 over x times w equals 0. And we can see that will be pretty easy to do if we separate the variables. So we will have w prime is equal to negative 3 over x times w. We'll divide that w over, and we will get w prime over w is equal to negative 3 over x. And then we're going to abuse notation here to split up the w prime into a dw over dx. So once we do that, we will have dw over w is equal to negative 3 over x dx. And we can easily take the antiderivative of both sides here. The left-hand side is just going to give us the natural log of the absolute value of w. And the right-hand side is going to give us the natural log of x to the negative third power. Then we can exponentiate both sides, and we will get that w is equal to 1 over x cubed. So now that we have our solution of the complementary equation, we know by variation of parameters that every solution of our original equation is going to be of the form w is equal to some arbitrary function v over x cubed, where we have the relationship v prime over x cubed is equal to the right-hand side of our equation, 1 over x plus 1 over x cubed. So from here, we're going to multiply by x cubed on both sides to solve for our v prime, and then we can take our antiderivative to solve for v. So we'll have v prime is equal to x squared plus 1, and taking the antiderivative of that, we will see that v is equal to x cubed over 3 plus x plus some constant c1. So let's kind of summarize our relationships between all these variables. So we had z prime is equal to w, which we have is equal to v over x cubed, which means we can now write our z prime in terms of our v. 
So we can write z prime is equal to v over x cubed, which is equal to one over x cubed times x cubed over three plus x plus c one, which is going to equal one over three plus one over x squared plus c one over x cubed. And that is of course equal to z prime. So from here, we are going to take the antiderivative of z and we can finish it off, but let's do that on the next page. So on the last page, we had that z prime is equal to one over three plus one over x squared plus c one over x cubed. And we need to now take the antiderivative of both sides there to solve for z. So let's go ahead and do that. So the left-hand side will just become z and the right-hand side will be one over three x. And then taking the derivative of our one over x squared will give us a minus one over x. And lastly, for our c over x cubed term, we will have minus c one over 2x squared, and then we will pick up another constant, c2. Now, if you recall, our relationship between y and z is that y is equal to x times z. So all we have to do now is multiply the right-hand side of this equation here by x, and we will have our final solution for y. So our general solution will be y is equal to 1 over 3, as the x will cancel. Then we'll have minus 1 minus c1 over 2x, and lastly plus c2x as our final general solution for this differential equation. So let's get into our second example. So for number two, we are given the equation x squared y double prime minus 3xy prime plus 3y is equal to zero. And our given solution for the corresponding homogeneous equation is y sub one is equal to x. So once again, we are going to make our substitution. We're gonna let y equal z times y one which is equal to xz. And we will have the same derivatives as before. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab those from our last problem. So now that we have those, let's go ahead and substitute them in. So we'll have x squared times z double prime x plus two z prime. Then we will have minus three x times z prime x plus z. And lastly, we will have plus three times xz and that is equal to zero. So we can see we have done this properly as this three X Z will cancel with this three X Z. So let's go ahead and multiply through in combined like terms. So our Z double prime term will be X cubed Z double prime. And then we will contribute two X squared Z prime from this first one and minus three X squared Z prime from the second one. So we will be left with negative x squared z prime, and that will be, again, equal to zero. So we can see that this equation is in fact separable. So let's go ahead and add this z prime term over to the right-hand side. So we'll be left with x cubed times z double prime is equal to x squared times z prime. Then we'll divide that x cubed over, and we will be left with z double prime equals one over x times z prime. And then we can move our z back to the left-hand side and we'll be left with z double prime over z prime is equal to one over x. Now from here, we can do our reduction of order step. So we're gonna let w equal z prime, which means that we'll have w prime over w is equal to one over x. And then we are going to once again abuse notation. So we will, have, we will split this w prime into a dw and dx so that will leave us with dw over w is equal to one over x dx, which makes it very easy for us to take the antiderivative of both sides. So we'll take the antiderivative of both sides and we'll be left with the natural log of w is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus some constant c. And then we can substitute our z prime back into this equation. So we'll have the natural log of z prime is equal to the natural log of x plus c. And now we can exponentiate both sides. So the left-hand side will just be z prime, and the right-hand side will be e to the power of the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And we can split that e term up into e to the power natural log of the absolute value of x. That'll be times e to the power c. We are going to rewrite this e to the c as a new constant c1, and this e and natural log will cancel out. So we'll be left with z prime is equal to x times c1, 
and we can now easily take the antiderivative of both sides again. So the left-hand side will be z, and the right-hand side will be x squared c1 over 2, and then we'll have another constant c2. Now, if you recall, our relationship between y and z in this problem is y is equal to x times z. So all we have to do is multiply through by an x, and we will have finished this problem off. So that'll give us the final general solution for this problem. y is equal to x cubed c1 over 2 plus c2x. So let's go ahead and get into our third and final problem. So for problem number three, we have once again x squared times y double prime plus x y prime minus y is equal to four over x squared. And we have our solution for the corresponding homogeneous equation given as y sub one is equal to x. So once again, we will make the substitution y is equal to y one times z, which in this case is of course x times z. And we have the same partial derivatives as before. So let me go ahead and paste those in. So we have those partial derivatives there. So let's go ahead and make a substitution here. So we'll have x squared times z double prime times x plus 2z prime plus x times z prime x plus z. And lastly, minus x times z. And that is, of course, equal to 4 over x squared. So we did this right because this will cancel with this. And let's go ahead and multiply through and combine our like terms. So we will have x cubed z double prime, and then we'll get two x squared z's from here and one x squared z there. So we'll have plus three x squared z prime. And that is of course going to be equal to four over x squared still. Now we can do our reduction of order step and let w equal z prime which will leave us with x cubed times w prime plus three x squared w is equal to four over x squared. And we have transformed this into a first order linear differential equation, which we learned how to solve in like the third video or something like that. But before we go about solving it, let's divide through by our x cubed. So we'll have w prime plus three over x w equals four over x to the fifth power. So if you recall, in order to solve first order linear equations, we have a formula which revolves around solving for this alpha of x, which is given by the exponential of the integral of our coefficient here, three over x dx. And that's going to be equal to the exponential of the natural log of the absolute value of x cubed so the exponential and the natural log will cancel out, which will give us alpha of x is equal to x cubed. And now that we have solved for our alpha, we can plug it into our formula for these types of problems, which I'll write out for you now. So we have w is equal to one over alpha of x times the integral of alpha of x times our forcing function dx. But our forcing function for this problem, if you recall from earlier, is going to be 4 over x to the fifth. So once we make our substitutions, we will have 1 over x cubed times the integral of x cubed times 5 over x to the fifth. I'm sorry, this is supposed to be a 4. So we can see that this x cubed will cancel this bottom power down to a 2. So we'll have w is equal to one over x cubed times the integral of four over x squared dx. So once we take the antiderivative of that, we will be left with one over x cubed times negative four over x plus some constant c1, which means that our w will be equal to negative four over x to the fourth plus c1 over x cubed. And if you remember, w is equal to z prime. So we will want to take the antiderivative of this right-hand side one more time. So we'll have z is equal to the antiderivative of negative four over x to the fourth plus c one over x cubed dx. And once we do, we will find that z is equal to the following. We will have four over three x cubed minus c1 over 2x squared plus some constant c2. And now we can finish this problem off by substituting in our relationship for y, which was y equals x times z. So if we multiply through, we will have y is equal to 4 over 3x squared minus c1 over 2x 
plus C2x, which is our final general solution for this differential equation. And I think that's a good place to stop.